Hello everyone and welcome to uh, part one of a two-part tutorial on managing traffic uh, arriving into the Los Angeles TRACON. We're going to begin this particular video which is uh, primarily on the theory of how to manage traffic arriving into the area with a quick overview of what we're looking at here on the radar scope just so beginners to the game can get a little bit of orientation uh, if they've been confused by the symbology or what's going on on the radar screen. Uh, first off, one thing you immediately note is these uh, circular rings that are radiating out from the center of the Los Angeles airport. There is no particular reason other than that it's the busiest airport in the area that the radar is centered on Los Angeles. Uh, it's, it probably is the handiest place to center it because that's where most of the traffic by far is heading for. But it's important to remember that you're responsible not just for traffic arriving at LAX, but also traffic arriving at other airports like Santa Monica here, Long Beach which is down here, and perhaps even uh, the uh, Santa Ana airport which is out in this vicinity. For purposes of this tutorial, I have simplified uh, and removed some of the waypoints that will appear on your normal default display and I have added a few which are extremely useful for particularly managing ar arrivals into Los Angeles International. There is a, uh, uh, a .asx of this sector available uh, which I, is uploaded to the TRACON 2012 forum that you can use uh, to uh, as a uh, substitute for the standard LAX so you can get this same symbology depicted if you want. Even so, some waypoints and some navigational aids and airports have been removed from this screen just to simplify the entire tutorial so that the screen doesn't get too busy. That's part of the reason, for example, why you don't see Long Beach or Santa Ana Airport on here. Uh, now, we've got airports, which are depicted on the screen as these little uh, straight white lines. In the case of Los Angeles International, there are four runways, uh, two far left and right, two five left and right, and that's what these are here. You can see Santa Monica Airport's runway is depicted on here. The little white circles, on the other hand, are not airports. Uh, those are navigational aids, sometimes called VORs, very high-frequency omni-range beacons, and uh, they are used for navigation by the airplanes. They uh, have a special kind of radio set up so that the airplanes can fly on a particular what, what are called radials that uh, emanate from the uh, VORs. And there are several of these uh, that are shown on the screen right now. Pomona VOR, Seal Beach VOR, Los Angeles and Santa Monica VOR for example. Van Nuys VOR is out here, Filmar VOR is out here. Uh, VORs are uh, used within the game uh, really not uh, for anything more than a visual reference point. They're really not any different than the next kind of, um, of uh, some symbol we'll talk about here, which is a waypoint. So waypoints are these little stars. Waypoints are purely fictional. There is no physical representation of them for the most part. They're used to represent a particular latitude, longitude, and in some cases also an altitude that a uh, plane would... Uh, is supposed to be at as they cross that particular waypoint. So I think that's the most important symbology and that should uh, get everybody generally oriented. The uh, waypoints of the most interest on uh, uh, the radar screen right now are the ones that sort of flow down this line out from the east and all the way down to the airport. Uh, these uh, particular waypoints out here, River and Seaview, you uh, may recognize as being the names of uh, standard terminal arrival routes, and indeed that's exactly what they are. This is where those uh, stars begin. Actually, in some ways they begin even further out at these waypoints, Graham, Consul, and Wivel, but the, uh, the uh, uh, star part of it actually begins at these, and then they are funneled down through this set of waypoints into the airports. These waypoints on this on the south side, Fueler Gate, Honda, and Lima, are uh, the uh, on the ILS approach itself for runway uh, 25 left, 25 complex, I should say. And uh, these, uh, Palak, Mercy, and Jetsa, are on the uh, ILS for runway complex on 24. So LAX has two uh, sets, two pairs of runways, 24 left, right, and 25 left and right. And uh, under uh, 
uh, we won't go into right now why these things have slightly different names uh, or how the runways are numbered. You can look that up on uh, Google if you're really interested. But uh, it's just important to know for right now that there are four runways, um, uh, the 25 complex and the 24 complex. Each has a left and a right. Within TRACON 2012, what's particularly useful about waypoints is that uh, they are an agreed upon point that both you and the airplanes in the game um, know about. So you can tell an airplane to go directly to the name of a waypoint by using the proceed direct command and it will fly from wherever it is directly, tur it'll turn towards that waypoint and fly to it at whatever altitude it's currently assigned. For that reason, it's kind of useful to know how to pronounce these waypoints. And the good news is, is that you can pronounce them pretty much exactly the way they look. And in general, the speech recognizer will un understand what you're saying. So this particular waypoint is River. This particular one is Sea View. This particular one is Lahab, and so forth. The uh, VORs, which also represent uh, a place you can direct the planes uh, to fly to, are a little less clear what they're called. Uh, if you happen to know from experience or from looking at aviation charts, then uh, you will know that this is the Seal Beach VOR, uh, that this is the Los Angeles VOR, this is Santa Monica VOR, this is Van Nuys, Fillmore, Pomona, and so forth. I actually don't know what uh, this one is. So. Uh, those you do have to look up the names if you want to use them as uh, points to proceed directly to or you can use the keyboard and just use the uh, three letter, letter name. A uh, uh, thing to note is waypoints always have five letters to them and VORs always have three letters so even without the little s uh, zero versus uh, or sorry circle versus star symbology then it uh, you can tell just by looking at the name whether it's a VOR or whether it is a uh, a waypoint. Okay, now let's have a quick look at uh, what, what's considered the normal uh, configuration for Los Angeles International. Airports always have a configuration that means the set of landing and departing runways that are appropriate for the current weather conditions. Now when a place like LAX has four runways, but you know, notice they're all oriented in the same direction. That's because the predominant winds in uh, Los Angeles either flow uh, from offshore, the ocean, inwards uh, towards the land, or the other way around. It is by far the most common for the winds to be coming offshore to onshore, so from the west towards the east. And so that is what's considered to be the normal configuration for Los Angeles. Sometimes it's said the airport is landing west, but normally they would just say it's landing in normal configuration. The other way around, when uh, the opposite runways are in use, the runway 6 and runway 7 pair uh, pairs, then that's called east operations, in which case the wind is blowing from the west offshore and airplanes are landing uh, from the ocean in towards the airport. At nights, when the winds are very calm, uh, it's very common for Los Angeles to be in east operations so that the airplanes are landing from offshore and therefore not making as much noise and disturbing people who are sleeping. But during the day, or whenever the winds are more than 10 knots coming uh, from offshore to onshore, the airplane is landing in what's called normal configuration. So this is the normal configuration for Los Angeles. Arrivals are coming in from the east and landing on runways 24 right or 25 left, usually in parallel and quite often in parallel. And departures are coming off of runways 24 left and 25 right. So if you uh, were to, if we were to zoom in, which we can't do any on this particular demo, um, the uh, you'd notice that runway 24 right is the outside runway of this pair and 25 left is the outside runway of this pair. This is furthest to the north and this is furthest to the south. And that makes sense because the airplanes are landing with the maximum horizontal separation by using the outside runways here. Uh, the opposite runway pairs are used for departures. So the two inside runways, 24 left and 25 right, are used for departures. This tutorial doesn't cover departure management at all, so this is actually the last uh, bit we we're going to see for departure runways. But I will make one comment about this, is that while it may seem 
intuitive that departures from runway 24 left would be intended to go off here to the north and that 24 right would be intended to come down to the south. That is not strictly true. A lot of the instrument departure procedures for 24 left have uh, departures that head to the south. So when we have a separate video uh, eventually around uh, departure management, you will see that. For the time being, though, it's just important to remember the inside runways are for departures. The outside runways are for arrivals. Now, the rest of this video uh, tutorial is going to be concerned with arrivals. And arrivals into the Los Angeles uh, airport are really classified in uh, uh, th three different um, categories that is depicted like this. So we have arrivals that are coming from the north and the west, that is those are coming down from the top of the screen, or coming from uh, out over the ocean, say they were arriving from uh, uh, Asia or from Hawaii or someplace like that, then they would be coming directly in over the ocean. Arrivals that are coming in from the south, arrivals that are coming in from the east, uh, whether it's the northeast or directly east or from the southeast. And these are all uh, detailed in the particular standard terminal arrival routes, the STARS, that we'll look into in just a, a couple more minutes. For the time being now though, the thing that's important to remember is that these are the three uh, organizations or the three categorizations of arrivals that are coming into Los Angeles. And as soon as you see an airplane that's coming in on one of these, in one of these three uh, uh, sectors, one of these three areas, your mind should immediately go to a particular way you're going to handle that aircraft for its landing uh, at Los Angeles if that's where it's bound for. We're going to get into that in just a little bit more. And in fact, let's go ahead and start with the easiest one, which is south arrivals. So south arrivals are those which uh, come in from the south and as far as I can tell uh, Tracon 2012 only models one arrival from the south, and that's the Lena 4. That approach, uh, airplanes on this approach, on this uh, arrival, come in from the south of the screen. They kind of make a right turn if they weren't going that direction as they came onto the radar screen. And then uh, approximately here, they make a turn and head towards the uh, Seal Beach VOR. They will be at various altitudes, but it's pretty common for them to be at 7,000 feet or below, or, uh, below. I have seen them uh, uh, quite commonly at 4,500 feet, which is a fine altitude because it keeps them under almost all of the other traffic that we're going to be dealing with that's coming in from the east. Uh, arrivals from the south are generally going to be sent to runway 25 left, and uh, the uh, solid line on all of these arrivals uh, depicts the part that they will fly all on their own without you doing anything more than acknowledging radar contact. And then uh, once they reach, in this particular case, the Seal Beach VOR, it's your responsibility to vector them along something like the dashed line. It doesn't have to exactly be this line, but that's what the dashed lines on the rest of this tutorial and the pictures represent are places where you are actively vectoring the aircraft. Um, this uh, arrival is actually a very simple one, they're all coming in pretty low. If they aren't already below 5,000 feet, then once they cross the uh, Seal Beach VOR, which they should do at no higher than 7,000 feet, and uh, you should put them there at 7,000 if they aren't at least that low already, then once they've crossed it, uh, bring them down to 5,000 feet, give them a left turn in towards uh, the final approach course for runway 25 left. This should be approximately a heading of uh, let's see, 270, which will put them on a 20 degree intercept with the 250 final approach course. And as soon as you've turned them and they are on that heading of roughly 270, uh, then you can clear them for the ILS approach with the cleared ILS runway 25 left approach command. So that one is pretty simple. Uh, next, let's look at the uh, east arrivals because that's almost as good. So the east arrivals also um, are primarily targeted at runway 25 left, but uh, because since they're coming pretty much straight in, you can take them to either runway, but the, your primary target should be 25 left, and we'll make the reason for that pretty clear in just a little bit more. Um, 
to say it briefly, it's because arrivals coming from the north and the west are primarily targeted at, runway, uh, at the 2-4 runway complex, and uh, so you want to leave room for both sets of arrivals to be landing at the same time. So the east arrivals are going to be coming in on runway 25 left. And there are three uh, stars that are involved in this particular um, set of uh, arrivals. Uh, the River 2 arrival, which comes in from Las Vegas in particular, but other airplanes come in uh, that direction as well. That comes in from the uh, northeast. It crosses the River Waypoint and which should be between 14,000 and 12,000 feet. And just for a moment of another symbology description here, anytime you're looking at an aviation chart and you see an altitude with a line above it, that indicates that the airplane should be at or below that altitude. And similarly, when you see a line underneath an altitude, it indicates the plane should be at or above that particular altitude. And when you see them both, that shows us that there's a little vertical corridor that they can be at here, uh, as high as 14,000 feet or as low as 12,000 feet, but they need to be between those two altitudes. Similarly, the Sea View 2 arrival comes into the Sea View intersection. That's for uh, planes coming in pretty much from the due east. And the Oldie 1 comes in through uh, Wyville intersection and uh, also joins up at the Sea View waypoint. In both cases, the altitudes here are the same as for the river, a uh, maximum of 14,000 and a minimum of 12,000. In the game, most of the airplanes are going to report in as descending from some altitude down to um, these altitudes, or some cases even lower uh, for uh, many times, for example, planes coming in from this side will be going all the way down to 7,000 and these going all the way down to 12,000. Unfortunately, that's completely wrong from a real-world perspective. They would never have been cleared lower than 12,000 feet for uh, arrivals that are coming in from this direction in the real world. The game has chosen to handle things a little bit differently, but that's really not a problem because the altitudes that they're descending to are um, um, useful ones for a little bit later in the game as they get closer to the airport. One thing, however, that is worth a mention is that there is a uh, threshold for aircraft speed. Above 10,000 feet, specifically actually at 10,000 feet and above, there is no speed limit for the airplanes. They can go as fast as they're capable of going. Uh, below 10,000 feet, there is an absolute speed limit of 250 knots, and the airplanes in the game will not go faster than 250 knots if they're below 10,000 feet. If they are above 10,000 feet, then they will go as fast as their normal cruise altitudes, which could be as high as 320 knots. Sometimes it's a bit lower than that, 310 or 280 knots. But that's an important thing to know, uh, that when the airplanes first come in and they're high, above 10,000 feet, they'll be moving along at more than 300 knots uh, for jets. And then uh, as soon as you clear them lower, or as soon as they automatically descend lower than 10,000 feet, they will slow automatically to 250 knots. Now here's why that's an important thing to know. When the airplanes are far away from the airport and you don't have a whole lot of traffic on the screen, you want them to go as fast as possible so that they get to the airport soon, making room for you to do other things later on as other aircraft are arriving. So it is often in your best interest when managing traffic arriving, particularly from the east, to keep them up above 10,000 feet. So perhaps traffic coming in that you're going to be sending over to runway 24, you might uh, tell them to descend and maintain 12,000, which will keep them above 300 knots until they get a little closer in. And airplanes coming in headed for the south complex, headed for the two runways 25, you might bring them down to, uh, say, 11,000 feet and then they will uh, be able to keep their speed up until they get closer to the airport. Now that's just a handy tip for getting the airplanes to the airport a little bit faster. If you let them automatically descend to whatever altitude they've said they're going to, and that altitude is below 10,000 feet, they will slow to 250 knots, and you will not be able to speed them back up again unless you climb them, and that's just really pretty much unheard of that you would climb an airplane back up again after it's begun an arrival. In all of these cases, for these three arrivals, the uh, next thing that's going to happen is that they're, you're going to vector them pretty much straight in to the uh, Los Angeles airport. And the vectors that you're going to use are going to look something like this. Now, in the real world, 
you would not have to move these guys out this far away from the uh, localizers and then vector them back in again. They would actually be on the localizer from uh, perhaps as far away as 40 or 50 miles and flying directly to the airport. The game doesn't permit that for ILS landings, which if you saw my ILS tutorial, you've seen already. So as planes are coming in on the River 2 or the Sea View or the Oldie, and you're going to be sending them, let's say, to runway 25 left, which is the most common destination, you need to bring them down so that they're uh, just parallel to, but outside the runway 25 left localizer. And then at some point along the way here, as depicted by the dashed uh, yellow line, you'll want to descend them initially to 7,000 feet around the time they're at uh, Fueler intersection, and then uh, down to 5,000 feet by the time they approach gate, and then um, ultimately give them a right turn or a left turn, depending on which side they're on, uh, into the uh, localizer and clear them for the ILS approach. In order to accomplish simultaneous parallel approaches on both runways, both uh, 25 left as well as 24 right, it's extremely important to keep a thousand feet at least of vertical separation between the airplanes. And that's why we're seeing here uh, things that are destined for the 24 complex. We're descending them to 4,000 feet after they cross Fueler or Pallock and that we're only descending them to 5,000 feet once they cross Fueler uh, for the uh, the 25 complex. That way they can fly parallel and very close to each other without getting a uh, conflict alert. Uh, once you clear them onto the approach, um, they will um, make the appropriate altitude adjustments themselves and will never generate a uh, altitude conflict. So backing up just a little bit now, this is the basic scoop for east arrivals is that uh, they're coming in along one of these three uh, standard terminal arrival routes. You're vectoring them uh, down either slightly to the left of the runways uh, to come into runway 25 left or slightly to the right of the runways to eventually come into runway 24 right. You should primarily try to take them into runway 25 left because there's going to be plenty of uh, other traffic coming in as we'll see in just a minute that's heading for the 24 complex and uh, once they cross the uh, Fueler intersection you should have them at about 7,000 feet. Once they reach these uh, uh, these approach fixes uh, you should have them at 5,000 feet if they're going to the 25 complex, 25 left, or at 4,000 feet if they're going to 24 right. And then uh, as soon as they have been cleared down to those altitudes you can clear them on to the um, ILS approach, either ILS 25 left or ILS runway 24 right. Okay, so that takes care of east arrivals. So now let's just take a look at the last one, which is also in some ways the most complicated, and that is the south, uh, sorry, the north and west arrivals. There are two of those, the uh, Sadie 6, which uh, covers airplanes that are coming in from the north, uh, from Fillmore VOR, crossing Simon Intersection, down to Sadie which is the uh, what the arrival is named after. Uh, making a left turn and heading through based intersection direct to Santa Monica Airport, actually Santa Monica VOR technically. Um, at that point you begin vectoring them and give them a left turn to heading 070 which is parallel to but the opposite direction of uh, the runway that they're going to be landing on. They head along this path at uh, 5,000 feet and then as just as they get uh, around Mercy or Gate, whichever uh, symbols you have on your particular chart, and definitely outside um, this uh, Honda intersection. Now, Honda is actually not applicable to the 2-4 right approach, but it probably will be on your screen, in particular if you're using my, uh, um, my map files. Uh, as you give them the turn, either just before or just after you've given them the turn, you also want to descend them down to 4,000 feet. And if you recall, that was very consistent with the altitudes that we had for our uh, straight in arrivals, is that we've got airplanes intending uh, going to too far right down at 4,000 feet. Same thing is occurring over here. And uh, once they have made this turn, and you uh, can probably just give them a turn from, from this position out here uh, directly to a heading of uh, about 225 degrees. That'll put them on a 25 degree intercept with the runway. And once they've completed that turn uh, and uh, are heading in towards the localizer, you can clear them for the ILS 24 
right approach. Sadie 6 arrivals may also be coming in from uh, due west out over the ocean, um, in which case they'll be coming directly in to the Sadie intersection rather than down from the north, but the rest of the procedure is exactly the same. Fly them to Santa Monica, put them on a 070 heading. Once they get outside Honda and some right around Mercy or Gate intersection, give them a right turn, uh, vector them toward the uh, 24 right localizer, and then uh, descend them to 4000 and clear them for the arrival. The other approach that comes in from the uh, north is uh, the Chemo 2 arrival. Outside of Chemo intersection, and you actually will see more on your radar map, I've had to constrain this one to the limits of what the video can be, um, uh, our planes may be arriving from Chemo from uh, the uh, a little bit more to the right or a little bit more to the left than this, but they're funneled through uh, Chemo and then they fly on their own down to Darts intersection and then over here to Perms, at which point you have to take over and give them a turn uh, in towards the airport. Uh, heading of uh, 160 or 120 or even 100 will work as an initial heading and then uh, to send them to 4,000 feet and turn them into the airport pretty much exactly like you were doing with the traffic coming in from uh, Sadie 6. Now an interesting uh, problem occurs when you have uh, airplanes that are on both the Sadie 6 and the Chemo 2 arrival at the same time since we are turning them in in the same place. And that's part of the reason I said here that the initial turn you give them don't be constrained to think that this is the only vector. And this probably represents about a one, uh, perhaps a four zero um, uh, heading. It's perfectly fine to let them continue out straight a little bit more this way and then turn them in behind any traffic that you have coming in on the uh, Sadie 6 and uh, that you're vectoring along the 070 radial. You're just, that's a thing you're just going to have to learn by feel a little bit is to maintain the at least a minimum of three miles of separation with the aircraft. But uh, just with a little practice, you'll be able to, I think, to sort out uh, how to do this. And we'll see this uh, in part two when we do the practice part of this. So that's it now. That's all of the arrivals. We'll just turn them all on here so that we can see. Um, it looks a lot more complicated now, which is why uh, I didn't start with this picture all put together at the same time. And, uh, but uh, this is, in a nutshell, the entire uh, game uh, in terms of managing arrivals in. Uh, we've got the River 2, Seaview, and Oldie, which are, which are going to result in straight-in approaches to the airport. We've got the uh, south arrivals coming in through Seal Beach, which are going to be uh, almost on a uh, left base. So flying directly at the approach course and then a left turn onto final. And then we've got the uh, Sadie 6 uh, arrivals, which are coming in on flying basically a downwind and then a base and a final approach. And the Chemo 2, which is coming in on a, uh, a right base for uh, runway 24 right and then being vectored onto the final approach course and cleared for the landing. So. Uh, that's it in terms of the theory of how we're going to get uh, these various airplanes into um, uh, Los Angeles Airport. And uh, we'll move on in part two and actually see some of this in action. In the meantime, while you're waiting for me to finish the part two tutorial, go ahead and use the, this tutorial as a guideline for helping you better manage your arrivals into the Los Angeles airspace. Good luck.